go to the armory, Reyna told him. Check our inventory. I'll call you if I need you. But... Frank caught himself. Yes, Reyna. He hurried off. Reyna waved Hazel and Percy towards the headquarters. Now, Percy Jackson, let's see if we can improve your memory. The Principia was even more impressive inside. On the ceiling glittered a mosaic of Romulus and Remus under the adopted Mama She-Wolf. Lupe had told Percy that story a million times. The floor was polished marble. The walls were draped in velvet, so Percy felt like he was inside the world's most expensive camping tent. Along the back wall stood a display of banners and wooden poles studded with bronze medals, military symbols, Percy guessed. In the center was one empty display stand, as if the main banner had been taken down for cleaning or something. In the back corner, a stairwell led down. It was blocked by a row of iron bars like a prison door. Percy wondered what was down there. Monsters, treasures, amnesic demigods who had gotten on the Reina's bad side. In the center of the room, a long wooden table was cluttered with scrolls, notebooks, tablet computers, daggers, and a large bowl filled with jelly beans, which seemed kind of out of place. Two life-size statues of greyhounds, one silver, one gold, flanked the table. Reyna walked behind the table and sat in one of the two high-backed chairs. Percy wished he could sit in the other, but Hazel remained standing. Percy got the feeling he was supposed to also. So, he started to say. The dog statues bared their teeth and growled. Percy froze. Normally, he liked dogs, but these glared at him with ruby eyes. Their fangs looked as sharp as razors. Easy, guys, Reyna told the greyhounds. They stopped growling but kept eyeing Percy as though they were imagining him in a doggy bag. They won't attack, Reyna said, unless you try to steal something or unless I tell them to. That's Argumentium and Arum. Silver and gold, Percy said. The Latin meanings popped into his head like Hazel said they would. He almost asked which dog was which. Then he realized that was a stupid question. Reyna set her dagger on the table. Percy had the vague feeling he'd seen her before. Her hair was black and glossy as volcanic rock, woven in a single braid down her back. She had the poise of a sword fighter, relaxed yet vigilant, as if ready to spring into action at any moment. The worry lines around her eyes made her look older than she probably was. We have met, she decided. I don't remember when. Please, if you can tell me anything. Well, first things first, Raina said. I want to hear your story. What do you remember? How did you get here? And don't lie. My dogs don't like liars. Agamentium and Arnum snar snarled to emphasize the point. Percy told his story, how he'd woken up at the ruined mansion in the woods in Sonoma. He described his time with Lupa and her pack, learning their language of gestures and expressions, learning to survive and fight. Lupa had taught him about demigods, monsters, and gods. She explains that she was one of the guardian spirits of ancient Rome. Demigods like Percy were still responsible for carrying on Roman traditions in modern times, fighting monsters, serving the gods, protecting mortals, and upholding the memory of the Empire. She'd spent weeks training him, until he was strong and tough as a vicious as a wolf. When she was satisfied with his skills, she'd sent him south, telling him that if he survived the journey, he might find a new home and regain his memory. None of this seemed to surprise Reyna. In fact, she seemed to find it pretty ordinary, except for one thing. No memory at all? she asked. You still remember nothing? fuzzy bits and pieces. Percy glanced at the greyhounds. He didn't want to mention Annabeth. It seemed too private, and he was still confused about where to find her. He was sure they'd met at camp, but this one didn't feel like the right place. Also, he was reluctant to share his one clear memory. Annabeth's face, her blonde hair, her gray eyes, the way she laughed, threw her arms around him, and gave him a kiss whenever he did something stupid. She must have kissed me a lot, Percy thought. He feared that if he spoke about this memory to anyone, it would evaporate like a dream. He couldn't risk that. Reyna spun her dagger. Most of what you're describing is normal for demigods. At a certain age, one way or another, we find our way to the wolf house. We're tested and trained. If Lupa thinks we're worthy, she sends us south to join the Legion. But I've never heard of someone losing his memory. How did you find Camp Jupiter? Percy told her about the last three days. The Gorgons who wouldn't die, the old lady who turned out to be a goddess, and finally meeting Hazel and Frank in the tunnel in the hill. Hazel took the story from there. She described Percy as brave and heroic, which made him uncomfortable. All he'd done is carry a hippie bag lady. Raina studied him. You're old for a recruit. You're what, 
16? I think so, Percy said.